people often say, well, what do we do? Can we fix this? I, I feel overwhelmed. Um, and to that, I would say that people are getting involved. We need to get involved at every level of government. I know there's a group here, um, 5G Small Cell Awareness, a local New York group. Um, and in every state, and in many, many accolades to all your incredible work, um, there, are, there are people who knew nothing about this, who are getting educated, and who are learning about it, and saying, you know, we want a right to say what goes in our front yard. We have a right to know about this issue. So what I recommend is addressing this at the federal level, at the very top, and also in your community, with your elected officials, neighbors, friends, and family. We need to halt streamlining bills. Oh, oh I, I can just use this, it's fine. Actually, can I unhook this? Sorry, okay, I'll just keep it like that. Okay. Um, halt for 4G, 5G streamlining bills at the state and federal level, and there are a couple moving forward, and you can go online to learn more about those. Also, Scientists for Wire Technology is another website that has information. Physicians for Safe Technology, as well as Americans for Responsible uh, Technology. We need to enact policies to reduce occupational exposure. I think that this is incredibly important, is the exposures to workers. Everything from the workers on the, uh, the polls, as well to uh, teachers in schools. Because we need to reduce exposures in schools, and instead what's happening is they're being increased. Um, and now, as an example of what can happen, this is hot off the press, New Hampshire House Bill 522 is an act establishing a commission to study the environmental and health effects of, of evolving 5G technology. And in this bill, you can go online to read it, the best part, they're saying, hey, let's see what's going on with 5G, but the best part is the questions that they want the commission to consider a whole list of like every question that every person who learns about this would ask, like, wait, for example, why have more than 220 of the world's leading scientists sign an appeal to the World Health Organization and the United Nations to protect public health from wireless radiation and nothing has been done? This is one of the questions. Go to the bill and please read it. We need accountability in our federal health agencies because no one is watching the store. For example, just uh, in November, the world's largest study on cell phone radiation, cell phone levels of radiation was done by our US government at a price tag of $30 million. Now this is excerpts from their uh, fact sheet of the National Toxicology Program of the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences. They exposed rats and mice to cell phone radiation for two years. Now, they normally live about three years, but they just did to two years, and they found increases. And they looked at the numbers of tumors and the different types of tumors, and they came to conclusions as to their confidence as to if it was from the cell phone radiation or maybe they didn't know what it was from. They concluded clear evidence of an association of the tumors of the schwannomas of the heart um, some evidence, which is still a meaning evidence that there is an association in the gliomas of the brains of the male rats. These tumors were found in the male rats. And also a different type of tumor in the adrenal glands in one group of male rats. There were also increases in um, cardiomyopathy in the right ventricle, DNA damage in certain brain regions, um, and statistically significant increases in different groups and different exposures um, in the prostate gland, the pituitary gland, the adrenal gland, liver and pancreas, but they didn't feel that they could say that was uh, some or clear evidence at this time. Um, but what is so important about this study is it was so carefully controlled. No one has done, that $30 million price tag was because they made sure that they could know how much radiation the animals were exposed to. 
Whereas when you do studies on people who use cell phones for the long term, you really can't know, you're relying on their memory. So it's been argued that those studies don't have, we need the, the, the well done animal studies to be added to that. Now I need to add something else really important that I might not have time to get through through my slides, which is that the types of tumors that they found in the male rats are the same cell types as the tumors that have been found in studies on humans, the case control studies on humans, where they looked at people who use cell phones for over 10 years, they looked at under 10 years, but the people who use cell phones over 10 years and were described as heavy users, developed the same cell type cancers, acoustic neuromas uh, and glioblastomas. Now, I have a question. What do you think a heavy use would be in these studies? Anyone? I can't hear you. An hour, an hour a day? Well, that, that's good, that's good actually. I thought you'd say like 10 hours, but the, the um, heavy use was defined about under 30 minutes a day with cell phone to the, to the ear. And those studies were done by Dr. Hardell, who I hope I'll get to, I'm gonna talk about some of his research. He says, as do other scientists, that um, this radiation meets criteria as a human carcinogen. Now what's so interesting is that the Food and Drug Administration nominated the National Toxicology Program to do this study in 1999. Because remember, we, we adopted the, the US government, uh, the EPA was defunded, we adopted limits, but we didn't even know, nor did we have research on long-term exposure. We didn't have adequate studies on long-term exposure to radiofrequency radiation. So the FDA said, well, well done animal studies should be done, and they nominated the NTP to do it. And here is, um, Dr. John Booker, who at NIH, who's talking in one of the two congressional hearings done in the United States, uh, federal hearings, on cell phone radiation and health. And he's talking about how, if you can see from the pictures, the animals were in underground bunkers. I mean, they worked so hard to make sure that they were careful about how much radiation the animals were exposed to. And you can see the bunkers going underground. You can watch him testimony about this study, which was gonna be the end all, be all of all studies to show if cell phone radiation was safe and really add to just cap it off. Uh, and he talks about research from the University of California uh, that they are, were doing on children. And what I wanted to say, because I hope everyone goes and, and watches this congressional hearing, is that those studies were completed published, and they indeed found um, behavioral problems related to cell phone exposure. After the National Toxicology Program findings were released, clear evidence of cancer in the male rats, the heart tumors, the Food and Drug Administration issued a statement that after reviewing the study, we disagree with the conclusions of their final report. This was a peer-reviewed report, extensively reviewed, unlike a three-day peer review, which is unprecedented. They disagree with the uh, findings of clear evidence of carcinogenic activity. And they believe existing safety limits for cell phones remain acceptable for protecting the public health. That's online, you can watch that. Now, um, Dr. Ronald Melnick is a national, uh, is an NIH scientist 26 years, now retired, who helped design the study. Remember, it took uh, you know over a decade. He's now one of our scientific advisors, and that image is from a talk he just gave at the 5G Wireless Forum in Michigan, which I would urge everyone to learn more, to go to the 5G Wireless Forum, just search it on our website, ehtrust.org. And um, he's written an op-ed in The Hill where uh, he calls out the FDA and says the FDA needs to do their job and that this shows um, that there are effects at non-thermal levels and that there needs to be uh, um, action taken to look at our limits and 
the whole issue of radio frequency, look at the information from the National Toxicology Program study and do a quantitative risk assessment so that we can develop proper safety standards, which we don't have. He also published in environmental research, and that's a quote I have there, um, an, an article debunking all the common criticisms of the National Toxicology Program study, which you've probably heard or will hear when you go online to read about it. And he does so with citation after citation in technical detail. Um, and the interesting thing is that the FDA says they reject the findings, but where, why? Where are the technical details? Because what they put out on their page is all debunked by what Dr. Melnick talks about in his paper. He also talks about something super important, because I'm not going to go too much into the science uh, here. I'm talking more about policy. But that is that the majority of, of studies that looked at oxidative stress found effects. And we know that oxidative stress leads to a myriad of illnesses. He talks about that in that paper. That's in environmental research. And what he says is, without directly causing DNA damage, um, radio frequency may induce oxidative DNA damage and thereby initiate or promote tumor development. And there's also really important research done, um, it's, it's by um, Dr. Lurchell, which looked at radio frequency in combination with a toxic exposure that you know is going to cause tumors in the animals and rodents and found a tumor promotion effect. So a synergistic effect increased tumors in the animals that were treated with both the toxic agent and the radio frequency radiation. And that was at very low levels. And that should concern us all, considering how much pollution we have in our environment. So what environmental health trust scientists and also uh, other scientists, so Dr. Hardell, Dr. Melnick, Dr. Carpenter, Dr. Miller, Dr. Davis, Lloyd Morgan, myself, we wrote a letter to the FDA and we asked for the technical documentation on why are they rejecting the, this study. We've not received an answer. Um, I talked about Dr. Hardell, who did research on case control studies on people who hold cell phones to their ear and what was their risk for brain cancer um, and, and neck tumors as well. He looked at their exposure to cordless phones, which is really important because it makes his research, um, uh, the, the exposures um, were, were more carefully looked at because you might not use a cell phone a lot, and you might be in this study, but you might use your home cordless phone. And home cordless phones emit radio frequency radiation as well. But he accounted for that in his research. He also was a, a researcher who looked at um, Agent Orange and the herbicides in Agent Orange in the 80s and, and did research in the 70s as well. He's now the leading expert, one of the leading experts on cell phone radiation. And he's published several papers, both his research on people using cell phones as well as reviews of the research and states that it is carcinogenic to humans and guidelines need to be urgently revised. As well in 2018, Another study, a review incorporating the NTP findings, concluded that radio frequency is a class um, can be regarded as a human carcinogen based on the, the research that we have now with the NTP. There's also the Ramazzini Institute study. There's an, Itali it's an Italian research group that did research and also found at much lower levels they found the same kind of tumors in their male rats as NIH found in theirs.